substantial amount of variability expressed as a coefficient of variation. And here are the results. And Kesselman collapsed across sample sizes of 3 and 5. Let's say it was not sample sizes, but groups of 3 and, and 5. So I don't know if it varied from 3 to 3 to 5. They're only reported this way. And we can see that for coefficient of variation in the variances equal to 0.2 and 0.4, the percentages stick around the 5% level. And that's what we want. We want 5% or 0 0.05. We don't want greater than 0 0.06 or 6%. And that's true for the 0.2 and 0.4 variance heterogeneity across the group. Uh, the three or more groups. Now things break down once you hit variance coefficient of variation of 0.80. You can see now we're up in the sixes and the sevens, so we're not keeping alpha at 5% in this case. And that's true if the sample sizes are equal. So it's an interesting finding, I think. And something to keep in mind is that although a coefficient of variation of 0.8 doesn't look very large, the actual values for the variances corresponded to a range of uh, 2.08 versus, versus 0.17. So one group had a variance of 0.17, and the other group had a variance of 2.08, which is equal to a difference of 12.23, so a 12 times difference. In my experience, that's very, very substantial. I don't know if you would see that in practice. You might see that less than 5% of the time, I think. So I think the if you can keep your variance heterogeneity expressed as a coefficient of variation at 0.4 or less, even you know 0 0.5, 0 0.6, you'd have to figure that you'd probably still be fine. So recommendations. If sample sizes are equal and difference in variance is less than 3.5 times, then you don't have to worry no matter how small your sample size is. That's based on Ramsey's study. If sample sizes are equal and n greater than 15, then you don't have to worry about any size difference in variances. It can be uh, any, m any amount, as long as your sample size is 15 or greater. My hunch is that that's in most cases. If samples are, are unequal, and unequal as in 40% difference between the smallest and largest, and unequal variances more than eight times, then you can't use the t-test or ANOVA. Your p-value will not be robust. It'll be beyond 0 0.06 or less than 0.04. I'll mention this 40% is probably at the extreme. If you look at other studies, uh, it's probably closer to, it's as, clo it's as small as 20% difference. So it's somewhere in the 20 to 40% difference. And my hunch is that it depends on how big your sample sizes are. And that's why there's variability across people's recommendations or people's results in terms of that. So 40% uh, is, is at the high end. I definitely would not go beyond that. What are your options if you do, uh, if, you're, if you have unequal sample sizes of greater than 40%? Well, you can do the Welch's t-test or the Welch's f-test or the brown Forsyth f-test. These tests do not assume a homogeneity of variance, and they do not assume equal sample sizes. They're quite phenomenal statistics from that perspective. I'm even asking the question, why would you ever do the t-test at all? Why not just do the Welch's t-test all the time? And Welch's f-test all the time. I have to look into the power trade-off there. I don't think there's much. Now, if your sample sizes are equal and you have unequal variances, that's right, if your sample sizes are equal and you have unequal variances, more than two times difference, and differentially skewed distributions, that is, one po distribution is positively skewed and one is negatively skewed, uh, then you shouldn't use the standard t-test, uh, ANOVA, or even the Welch-Brown uh, test. They all break down. This differential level of skew is, is um, very serious. But I hope you don't come across that in practice. What are your options if you... Uh, oh, I have the last recommendation. Uh, is that if, the th if you have three means or more, then uh, if you have three means or more and your coefficient of variation across your variances is 0 0.80 or greater, then you can't use the ANOVA. My hunch is that you will not find many cases like that. So if it's less than 0 0.0, 0 0.80, I would say somewhere like 0 0.6, 
certainly 0.5, 0.4, uh, you're okay with the ANOVA.